Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Eileen Dondero Foley City Council Chambers for the meeting of Monday, June 8, 2009. Um, this evening, I'm calling the meeting to order, and we have a lengthy agenda, so I appreciate your patience in advance. And uh, if we can ask the city clerk to call the roll. Mayor Farini? Here. Assistant Mayor Blaylock? Here. Councilor Noveline Clayberg? Here. Councilor Dwyer? Here. Councilor Smith? Here. Councilor Kennedy? Here. Councilor Spear? Here. Councilor Hetmanic? Here. Councilor Penelakis? Here. This time I'd like to ask Councilor Spear to lead us in a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening on your agenda, we have some mayor's awards to offer. and. Um, I'm happy to do that in just a moment, but there is a mayor's award that is not on your agenda, and I want to um, undertake that one first. Um, as you know, it is our policy to do a yearly award ceremony for the individuals who serve as appointed officials on our various boards and commissions. But from time to time, you get an individual who uh, has done so much has worked so hard, has served in so many capacities that uh, it's important to have recognition outside that. Uh, and in this particular case, uh, I'm happy to be offering that uh, to a good friend and someone who has served the city long and well. Uh, before I give you her name, I'll just give you some of her accomplishments. Um, she has worked on the FOCUS project. She has been uh, the head of the Atlantic uh, Heights Neighborhood Committee. She has been the chair of the Citywide Neighborhood Committee. She has served on the Economic Development Commission, and she has served the city in numerous other ways. And so it is my pleasure today to welcome Robin McIntosh to give her a mayor's award and a gift um, of our uh, consideration from the city. And why don't you ask you to come on up and we'll give you an award. I'd like to ask Tylene Juice to offer a few words, if you'd be so kind. I'd like to thank you, Mayor and Council, for honoring Robin. And uh, the Ranger Chapter of the DAR is also honoring her this evening with a Community Service Award for all the work that she has done for the city. And I thank you very much for this. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. It's people like Robin that make our city great. Thanks very much. We move on to more awards. And it's always happy. Um, some parts of the meeting aren't so happy. The awards part is one of the best, and I am very happy and proud on behalf of the City of Portsmouth to welcome the PHS Girls Tennis Team, which won the Class I State Championship, and we have Mayor's Awards and gifts for you all. So please stand and be recognized. I'm going to ask you to thoroughly embarrass you. I'm going to ask each of you to come forward one by one, and we'll give you a mayor's award and a fabulous T-shirt. Right this way, um, Alex Barnes. Congratulations. There you go, Kantika Bogard. Lee Cronin. Lindsay Duplessis. Thank you. 
Savannah Federo. Victoria Holt. Darby Lettington. Candice Maldini. Katie Mead. <laughs> Samantha Montgomery. Gabrielle Nichols. Alexandra Ritchie. Rebecca Reisman. Congratulations. Emily Schiller. Mary Simon. Amy Stewart and Coach Sarah Olson. Congratulations, Coach. Would you like to say a few words? Thanks. Please do. I have to bring my captain up too because she's the one that got this whole team to where we are right now. So. Hi, um, I would like to start off by thanking the City Council for presenting us these words today. And I also have to um, give a big round of applause to our parents, our fans, and this team for coming together and really supporting our top six. We couldn't have done it without all 16 of us. I'd like to thank all of you too for having us here for your nice gifts. And I really want to say thank you to our wonderful athletic department at Portsmouth High School. We have such a great school and a great athletic department. And I, we were at the finals the other day, and Russ Wilson, Tom Kozakowski, even the administrative assistant, um, Karen Conway, and the principal were all at our finals match in Concord. And that means so much to me. And I think that's how we did it, was all of the support we have from you guys and from everybody in the community. And thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, one and all. And we know that you're dutifully sitting there, and if you wish to have a civics lesson, you're, you're more than welcome to remain. However, uh, if you have other things to do this evening, it being the end of the year, please uh, feel free to depart. And as they depart, I'll begin with a public hearing that is before us this evening. I'm sorry. Acceptance of the minutes. Thank you to the city clerk. Uh, we have minutes of May 11 and May 18 before us. Um, so moved. Second. Um, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Um, we next have, I, boy, I jumped ahead really fast, the public comment session. And we have two speakers this evening. For those of you who are not um, familiar with the rules of public comment, it goes like this. You are each allotted three minutes to speak. Kindly come forward to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and proceed with your comments. Um, at two minutes and 30 seconds, more or less, the city attorney will raise the sign you now see, indicating you have 30 seconds remaining. And when you see a polite thank you, you know that the three minutes is up. With that, I ask you to come forward. We have two speakers this evening. First is Jacqueline Gravel. If you wish to come forward, you'd be most welcome. Uh, Jacqueline Gravel, 12 Caswell Gra Drive, Greenland, New Hampshire. 
I am speaking on behalf of the Portsmouth Association of Clericals in Education, otherwise known as PACE, in reference to the contract that is being considered by the City Council this evening. We have seen in the newspaper that Mr. Bohenko feels that our decision to put forth this contract that has a pay freeze in fiscal year 2009-2010 is extremely commendable. We don't disagree with that observation, but we would like to put forth to the Council and the residents of Portsmouth that this decision was not made without difficulty. PACE has been in negotiations with the City for over a year, and I personally have been on the negotiating team in the past, as well as the chair of the current negotiating team. And based on my previous experience, this year was extremely difficult and frustrating. Our feeling is that the City did not impart the information we needed to negotiate our contract in a timely manner. We are aware that the City has certain parameters that they are looking for when negotiating contracts. But these percentages were not alluded to and we were left to flounder around for the right criterion. In addition, there were rumors swirling about, about concerning the Retirement Bill HB 1645, Section 33. In fact, Mr. Bohenko made a statement in the City Manager's comments for City Council Agenda, September 15, 2008, in reference to this bill. And I quote, this provision directly affects municipal contracts. The City of Portsmouth is reluctant to settle any new contracts in light of this pension exposure. We feel that these factors were the major reasons we went to impasse, which cost the City and PACE a fee for a mediator. After a lengthy meeting with the mediator, a tentative agreement was reached, which we were assured met the criteria of the City. Then a last minute stipulation. We were asked to wait to hold off presenting our tentative agreement to the City Council until after the Governor signed an amendment to the Retirement Bill. After we had been assured by the City's team that this bill had no bearing on our contract negotiations, even in light of Mr. Bohenko's comments, this stipulation was disheartening and left us feeling deceived. Finally, after months of waiting, the Governor signed the amendment. We were then told we must reconsider the tentative agreement on which we worked so hard. Times are tough we were told, as if we didn't know that oil is more expensive, that the cost of food is skyrocketing, and the real estate market is crashing. So after the city's original criteria <clears throat> and waiting on the governor at the request of the city, we are now being asked to take a pay freeze as well. <clears throat> Please consider that while we are accepting a pay freeze, we are also paying an increase in our health insurance premiums and paying more for gas, oil, food, and other necessities. And although we are helping to save the City of Portsmouth over $300,000 at the expense of our families, we will most likely still have to pay an increased property tax. So yes, we have made the commendable choice to take no cost of living increase next fiscal year. But it is a choice made with disappointment and trepidation. Pace asked the City to accept this contract and we hope that in 2014, if the City's financial situation is improved, you will remember the sacrifice we are making here today. Thank you. Thank you. Our second and final speaker for public comment is Debbie Orloff, if she is still present. Is Ms. Orloff present? Apparently not. Um, with that, we will end the public comment session and we'll now move on to the public hearing. Um, but before I do that, I do want to take this brief opportunity to say, um, <clears throat> as I neglected to do so, um, that there was a uh, memorial service for former Mayor Evelyn Sorrell a few weeks ago. Um, and for those of you who were not present, or for those of you who were unable to watch on TV, or for those of you out there who did see it on TV, I just wanted to take this opportunity to express thanks to the city clerk, the city manager, city attorney, and all of the individuals for the city who helped make that possible. It was a truly memorable event with good reason, and I do want to express my thanks at this time. With that, we'll go forward with the public hearing, the first being an ordinance amending Chapter 7, Article 7, Section 7.408, Pierce Island Boat Launch Overnight Parking. I will refrain from reading the ordinance, but I will um, indicate uh, what the rules of a public hearing are, but first do we have a brief presentation? Yes, Your Honor, I'd ask that John Fredericks come forward, just give a brief uh, synopsis of the proposal. John? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Uh, this is a compilation of a, an effort, uh, a request was made to the Parking Committee and we uh, conferred with the Pierce Island Committee and the Recreation Board 
uh, to uh, compile an ordinance and rules uh, for an overnight boating permit that would permit folks that wanted to uh, go boating on an overnight basis to leave their boat or their boat trailer and vehicle on Pierce Island at the uh, boat launch. It uh, would entail $5 per night for residents, $25 per night for non-residents, maximum stay of seven nights, uh, maximum permits allotted at one time would be six. There would be a specific area in the boat launch designated for, uh, for the area for parkers. Uh, it would be limited to a, uh, a trailer and, and vehicle length of 25 feet. And uh, this permit would uh, be issued through the parking clerk's office and monitored by the police department uh, to, uh, to ensure that there's no overnight parking that isn't authorized by the city. Thank you, John. Council Kennedy, do you have a question? Yeah, um, John, I had a question about when you, when you said, and okay, I read it. You know, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Typically, when we would go to vote this would be when we would ask those questions, All so right. I'm mistaken. Um, my apologies, Council Kennedy. Um, <clears throat> with that, we'll go forward with the public hearing, and let me just offer the rules one time. Uh, please come up to the microphone, state your name and address. You can speak for as long as you wish. Be mindful, of course, that your uh, fellow citizens out there may wish to speak as well. I call typically three rounds, first, second, and third, so that if there is some burning notion that has uh, come to you after the first round and you forgot to offer it, you have that opportunity. With that, I will open the public hearing and ask people to line up and come forward. Mr. Whitehouse. Your Honorable Mayor. Member of the City Council, Mr. Bohinko, City Attorney. I'm Harold Whitehouse of 58 Humphreys Court. Uh, as a longtime member of the Pierce Island Committee, I feel as though I like to speak out on this. Even though the full committee approved of this overwhelmingly, uh, I just like to ask a couple of questions in reference to some wording. Now, we'll look at the top of the ordinance, which states the insurance of such permits shall be in accordance with the following terms and conditions. And then there's A, B, C, D. Now, D is what I have a question on. The D states, the permitted vehicle shall not be designed for human occupation, such as a motorhome, recreation vehicle, or trailer. And then E states, the vehicle must remain unoccupied for the duration of the permitted time. Now, what would prevent a boat owner from a t taking his boat onto the island in, in the area of the boat launching wrap late in the afternoon with the understanding that he's going to launch his boat early in the morning for fishing or the tide or outside the breakwater? Now, he could live aboard that boat because some of these 22, 24 footers have occupancy for two to three people. They have a small toilet. Now, it doesn't mention anything about living on the boat overnight. It just mentions recreation vehicle, trailers. Maybe we can add, and I address this to the city attorney, boats, also boats. That's just my concern. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Whitehouse. Further speakers on this ordinance? Public hearing. Now's your chance. Seeing no one rise, I call the second round. Seeing no one rise to speak for, against, or simply to, I close the public hearing and we move on to the next public hearing, which is a resolution authorizing borrowing in anticipation of revenues and taxes in the amount of $16 million. Uh, before we uh, get to the public hearing, I turn it over to the city manager. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This is a, uh, a, a uh, bonding resolution that we pass every year. It's temporary uh, financing that may be needed in the event that we have a cash flow situation. As you may be aware, under state law, we, uh, we bill in arrears uh, for taxes uh, so that uh, for our fiscal year beginning July 1, we actually don't bill the taxes until October and they're not due until December 1st for the first uh, half of the, uh, the tax bill. And the second half of the tax bill is billed again uh, and is not due in, in May and is not due till June, uh, so that sometimes we may have a cash flow issue. Uh, we have we have not had to utilize this uh, this line 
of uh, credit uh, in the last couple of years, but it is something we'd like to have available to us. So um, this is pretty much the uh, reason for this coming for you tonight. This is prior to us going forward with the adoption of a budget. This is necessary to have in the event that we have a cash flow issue. Uh, thank you, John. Um, we now uh, go forward with the public hearing. The rules, as are, are as I previously stated them, and I, I just will offer once again, out of courtesy uh, to Councilor Kennedy and others, that uh, under item 9 of your agenda, where we deal with the voting of the consideration of resolutions and ordinances, is where we would typically engage in motion practice or discussion or questions. So uh, just to clarify. With that, I open the public hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak to the $16 million um, tax anticipation issue, uh, does anyone care to rise and speak? If anyone does, please come forward. Seeing no one rise, I call a second round. Seeing no one rise, I call the third round. Does anyone care to speak for, against, or simply two? Seeing no one rise, I close the public hearing. And we move on to item eight of our agenda. Mr. Mayor. Council Dwyer. Um, could I ask to suspend the rules and bring an item forward, 12A6? We have a motion to suspend the rules by Councilor Dwyer for 12A6. So with a second by Councilor Smith, paging ahead, that would be the memorandum of understanding between the city and art speak. Uh, we do have a lengthy agenda. She's moving that forward. And so we have a motion. We have a second. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All right. Aye. I oppose. It's unanimous. So we will go forward and uh, consider that item. John, do you care to speak to the uh, Certainly, Your Honor. Also, um, with the con consent of the City Council, we do have uh, Ellen Feinberg here, who is Chair of Art Speak, who, if, if there's no objection, would come forward to speak to this issue. Seeing no one raise their hand. Ellen? Ellen? As she's coming to the podium, uh, this is a, uh, this has been something we do annually, just to extend the Memorandum of Understanding on an annual basis between the City and Art Speak. Ellen Feinberg. Good evening. As introduced, my name is Ellen Feinberg, and I am the chair of the board of Art Speak, and we are the cultural commission for the city of Portsmouth. We have had a memorandum of understanding as long as we've been a quasi-city board, and also have an agreement with the city for a collaboration. Um, we provide services for the city, especially in the areas of the creative economy and economic development, and the city in turn provides uh, some services and funding for us. So I would be glad to respond to questions. I was, I was asked to keep this very brief. Okay. And I believe, and I believe that you heard our report on May fourth about our accomplishments and what we've been doing. So I certainly don't want to go back over that territory. Okay. But I would be happy to answer questions. This is more or less something that is done annually. Uh, the council has had a in-depth discussion on this in the past, uh, and it really is if there is something that comes up during the year. Uh, it's something that then can be addressed during this process as part of the memorandum of understanding. So it, it more or less is uh, pro forma in nature. So thanks, uh, Ellen, and, and thanks, Thank John. You. We have a, uh, we're going to need a motion. Your Honor, I'd like to, oh, you want go to ahead, motion? Go ahead. I'd like to authorize city manager, um, city council authorized city manager to extend the agreement from July 1, 2009 through June 30th, 2010. Second. We have motion duly seconded discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thanks for coming. On we go. Any other? Uh, see no other motions pending, so I'm going to go forward with item A to the agenda, approvals of grants and donations. Item A, acceptance of donations to the Coalition Legal Fund, Town of Rye, $1,000. Town of Bridgewater, $1,200. And the Town of Newington, $2,000. Um, does anyone care to make a motion to approve and accept? So Second. We have a motion duly seconded to approve and, sec approve and accept and, and place in the Coalition Legal Fund. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Item B, acceptance of stormwater utility feasibility study grant in the amount of $27,500. Does anyone care to make a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, the motion would be to accept and expend a $27,500 DES grant for the purpose of a stormwater utility feasibility study, authorizing the city manager to execute any documents which may be necessary for that contract. Does everyone understand the motion? Discussion? Questions? 
City Manager, do you care to speak? I think it's, uh, well, one thing I would like to say about it is it's our opportunity to get a tremendous amount of public input as it relates to this issue, which is an issue that's going to be more and more uh, looked at nationally uh, for this whole issue of uh, stormwater regulation, which is uh, the, D the uh, EPA and, and the Congress is continuing to add additional regulations. So this gives us a, an opportunity to see how uh, our residents feel about it and to also get uh, some input from uh, a professional staff and uh, from a technical standpoint on how we might organize something like this. This does not create anything. This is just a study. This is an opportunity. Thank you for the explanation. Any discussion or questions? Councilor Kennedy, then Councilor Spear, then Councilor Dwyer. Um, is there any expectation from the city to put any funds up or is this This would be all in kind by staff, staff time. Okay. Councilor Spear. I think this is a good start with what I believe to be uh, a multi-year effort uh, on the not just the part of the council and the, and the administration, but uh, an educational uh, effort on to make everyone in the communities, not just Portsmouth, the other communities as well, understand uh, the purpose of managing stormwater in terms of the benefits, the downstream benefits that we get, uh, fishermen get, swimmers get, boaters get. Uh, people who drink water, I don't know, some of us drink water, uh, get by doing some of these improvements. And I know that, you know, over the next decade, we're going to see more regulation, as he suggested, and it will cost more. But I think there's going to be some benefits, too. Mm -hmm. Councilor Dwyer. Uh, two uh, informational questions. Are we provided um, by DES consultants who work with us through this process, or is the money to um, hire folks to do that. We will go through our RFP process and we'll hire the people we want to hire. Okay. And then is this something that uh, would get going soon or is it, what's the anticipation on? I believe, I'd ask Dave Allen to maybe respond to that. I believe we're going to get going as soon as possible, but uh, he has a time frame. Welcome, David. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, member of the City Council. Yeah, we have a, an RFP prepared right now. Um, I suspect that we'll be able to get that advertised within the next week or so with the intent to, to um, have somebody on board before um, the end of July and get going on the study um, within the next year, probably a year-long study. Further discussion or questions? Thank you, David. Yeah. Now, Council Nolan Clever. Will there be a committee set up of um, elected officials, citizens. We, we will staff. have we will have a, a group that we'll bring together. It, I don't think it's going to be a formal committee, but what it will be is there'll be certain stakeholders that we're going to get involved. So we don't want to be constrained with one committee. But what we'll do is we'll we'll invite, like we do with many other uh, projects, uh, the stakeholders conservation commission. We'll look at the city council. We'll look uh, to talk to various stakeholders in the business community, chamber of commerce, that type of thing. Further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Uh, item C, acceptance of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service funding for $5,000. The motion would be to accept and expend a $5,000 grant from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Partners in Wildlife Program for the purpose of restoring a section of shoreline. So moved. North Second. Mill Pond. Moved. Seconded. Discussion. Hearing none. Council Noblin Clayburg. I was very impressed with the association with New Franklin School. I think that's going to be a fantastic opportunity for the kids. I know they've done it before with the middle school and the South Mill Pond, and mm -hmm. um, this is just a fabulous opportunity for that. Okay. Uh, Dr. Burdick has been the one who's been spearheading this along with uh, the city staff, David Allen, uh, and the uh, wastewater uh, group and water group. So, Any further discussion or questions? I do believe it's been made and duly seconded. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Item 9, consideration of resolutions and ordinances, the first being a second reading of the ordinance amending Chapter 7, Article 4, Section 7.408, Pierce Island Boat Launch Overnight Parking. Um, and we'd be moving and passing second reading, scheduling a third and final reading. Probably. So moved. We have motion. Uh, is it acceptable to the maker if we schedule that meeting for the June 22nd, 2009 yes. sitting? It is. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I do recall a question. Councilor Kennedy. <clears throat> um, a quick, two quick questions that have been brought to my attention. Um, just for clarification, one, because I think it says it, but I think some people have spoke a different way. The length of the trailer, 
is what? 25 feet. Okay, so the car can be an addition? Yes. Okay, that's clarification for the public. And um, it was crazy over there this weekend. And so there needs to be clarification on where it's going to be. Um, I don't know if that's been decided yet or where we are in that process or how that's going to be delineated, but um, let's put it this way. Sunday afternoon, it was pretty exciting seeing my backyard with a bunch of people and laughing at people in the chaos and the almost hits and the, the boat that got thrown back into the water. And so there was not a lot of room to move around. So is there a way we can have that before the final vote just so everyone's clear on it? Sure, our, our intention was to put it on the eastern side of the island, or the boat launch rather, so the furthest away from the launch so that it was out of the way. And in our discussion, you know, when I was at your, the last uh, Pierce Island Committee meeting, I felt that was the, uh, the intent or desire of, of your committee to, uh, to have it on that side. Exactly, if that can be finalized. I mean, is that, are we finalizing it right now? I'm just curious. That was, yes. Yeah, I was going to work with, uh, with Russ Wilson on, That's on the what placement, I thought but that was our happen. intention was to put it there. All right. Councilor Smith. Thank you. I know we don't like to write ordinances from sitting up here, but I would like to uh, offer one amendment to this, and that is um, under E, um, <clears throat> pardon me, adding the word, so it would be vehicle and or vessel uh, shall remain unoccupied during the duration of the permit time. If that's okay with the city attorney. That's a motion. Uh, second. We have a second. Uh, city attorney, um, any comment? Mine will put in. Yep. No, I think that clarifies the question that was brought up earlier by uh, former Councilor Whitehouse. <clears throat> Canny former Councilor Harold Whitehouse. <laughs> any further? Uh, Councilor Novelin Clayberg. So we have a motion, uh, motion to amend, duly seconded. Do you care to speak to the motion to amend or the motion in chief? Uh, no, I was going to say what Ken just said. So okay. We're all set. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The amendment passes. Now we go to the motion in uh, chief. Any further discussion or question? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. And that's a unanimous vote. We move on to item B, adoption of resolution authorizing borrowing in anticipation of revenues and taxes in the amount of $16 million. Motion would be to move to adopt the resolution as presented. Does anyone care to make a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, moved by the Assistant Mayor, seconded by Council Novel and Clayburg. Uh, this will require a roll call vote if the City Clerk would be so kind. Oh, wait a minute. Discussion? No discussion. City Clerk? Assistant Mayor Blaylock? Yes. Council Novel and Clayburg? Yes. Council Dwyer? Yes. Council Smith? Yes. Council Kennedy? Yes. Council Spear? Yes. Council Hetmonic? Yes. Council Panalakis? Yes. Mayor Farini? Yes. Unanimous. <clears throat> Item C, 9C. The third and final reading of the ordinance amending Chapter 7, Article 3, Section 7.344, use of roller skates, coasters, and skateboards. Um, and it would be to move and pass third and final reading. We've had a public hearing. Does anyone care to make a motion? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion. Councilor Hetmanik. Uh, Councillor Clayberg and I would like to propose an, an amendment which would add, um, well, the current, current or ordinance prohibits uh, skateboarding in the Central Business District. We'd like to add a number of streets that are the major thoroughfares and heavily congested in town just for safety reasons that would prohibit skateboarding on those streets. I can read them if you want me to. I'll read them. Market Street Extension, Islington Street, Middle Street, Middle Road, Greenland Road, Peverly Hill Road, Elwyn Road, Ocean Road, Route 1 Lafayette Road, Maplewood Avenue, Woodbury Avenue, Bartlett Street, South Street, Miller Avenue, Summer, Summer Street, and Sagamore Avenue. It's strictly for safety purposes, so kids and uh, drivers don't contend with each other. Thank you, Councilor Hetmanik. Just a, a note on the rules and procedure. Um, in order to amend an ordinance in third reading, it requires a two-thirds vote of the City Council to suspend the rules and... In order to reconsider. And, and essentially, it's a motion to reconsider. So you would need to make your request in the form of a motion to reconsider, which I presume you do. I'll make a motion to reconsider. He does. And we need a second. And then we've got a second, Council Novelin Clayberg. Now we need discussion as regards that, um, as that motion to reconsider. Council Novelin Clayberg. 
Um, I, I have been uncomfortable with the ordinance um, the entire time we've been talking about it. And when um, Attorney Griffin came to our public hearing last time uh, and suggested that we restrict neighbor, uh, make it um, allowable in neighborhoods only, that really appealed to me. And I sat down with Attorney Sullivan and um, talked to Councilor Hitmanic, and we realized that it would be difficult to um, highlight neighborhoods where it would be allowed only and we came up with the idea of restricting certain streets and if you look at the streets they're ones as Councilor Hetmatic said that are you know highly trafficked um, like for instance Woodbury Avenue with its new improvements has become more narrow um, Islington Street is as we all know a very busy street and we just thought that this would make it safer so I feel very comfortable with the ordinance now with the um, streets that are added and um, I'd like to support that thank you Councilor Kleber uh, Councilor Spear I'm sorry Council Penelakis then Councilor Spear yes um, in all due respect to my other two councilors I think it's very unfair to put something like this on now that the public hearings have been heard um, I think that the ro the skateboarding and the rollerblades have really got out of hand with the fact of how bad they're supposed to be it's very discriminating I can't understand as a council how we can try to stop people from doing something that they enjoy we're not taking bicycles off those streets we're not taking scooters off those streets I just feel that if we're going to do this we need to have a public hearing and let the people that do the rollerblading and the skating be allowed to come forth and express their opinion we're putting them right back into their own backyard nowhere else except your own land thank you we have had considerable discussion on the philosophical uh, vagaries and the specific aspects of this ordinance. Um, we have an amendment, but it's a motion to reconsider. The motion to recon in order to take up the amendment, the motion to reconsider is required to vote by a uh, six to three vote. And so, do we have further discussion, Council Spear? My apologies. I also agree with uh, Councilor Penalakis. I'd like to add the signage required for this to me would be awful so I have no interest in having a lot of signs on all these roads saying no skateboarding which otherwise how would you even know that you're not supposed to skateboard on these roads so I think from an enforcement standpoint from uh, uh, from the standpoints that Councilor Penalakis mentioned I will vote against the motion further discussion hearing none are we ready for a roll call vote City Clerk. Assistant Mayor Blaylock. No. Council Noveline Clayburg. Yes. Council Dwyer. Yes. Council Smith. No. Council Kennedy. No. Council Spear. No. Council Hetmanek. Yes. Council Penalakis. No. Mayor Farini. No. Motion fails. So now we go on to vote third reading, as it is written. And we would need a motion to put that in play. So moved. Second. Mo moved and seconded. Uh, the, ordinate, the ordinance as written, not as the, as the amendment was, um, was offered. Um, we have a motion offered and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing that, are we ready to vote? Do we need a roll call vote? We'll do a roll call vote. Um, uh, City Clerk. Assistant Mayor Blaylock? Yes. Council Noveline Clayburg? No. Council DeWire? No. Councilor Smith? Yes. Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Councilor Spear? Yes. Councilor Hetmanic? No. Councilor Penalakis? Yes. Mayor Farini? Yes. We now move on to the consent agenda. There are two items on the consent agenda. A motion would be in order to adopt it. The um, first is a letter from um, Lord. I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor, I just had a question on the first letter. Pardon me? I have a question oh, on certainly. the first letter. Uh, uh, regarding the consent agenda, now would be a good time to ask that question. Okay. Why don't you go um, ahead? I just was in question of the fact of um, stopping all parking on them streets overnight. Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me do this. Why don't we move it separately 
and then we can have the discussion, okay? So the first is a letter from Lori Mondegari, <coughs> Greater Portsmouth Chamber of Commerce, requesting permission to hold the 14th annual Harbor Trail Road Race on January, Saturday, J uh, July 11, 2009. Uh, we further request is that the vehicles be prohibited from parking on Parrot Ave and Junkins Ave after business hours on July 10. We typically, we would move this to the city manager with power. If somebody wants to make that motion, we can then have the discussion. So moved. Second. Second. Um, I, I, I have taken the privilege of the chair in saying we're splitting up the consent agenda because of this specific question. So, I, pardon? Agenda. We're removing it from the consent agenda. Uh, so we have motion duly seconded. Um, uh, discussion, Councillor uh, Penalakis. Yes, um, this is a, a Friday night uh, in July, and I was just wondering if it's possible to keep all parking off in them streets. Your Honor, I, this, was, this was a request of the Chamber, uh, and the Chamber uh, President is here. If you would consent to suspend the rules and allow him to speak. I'll consent to suspend the rules if everyone's okay with that. Doug Bates, please come forward. Doug Bates, President and Chamber. This is the 14th year, and it's the, the, it's really only confined to the section of, of Lower Parrot Ave where it intersects Junkins because when the race starts, it's a terrible, terrible bottleneck, and it's very dangerous to the runners because we all try to squeeze in to a little tiny space when there's cars on both sides. And as they run down um, Parrot Ave, the, the, of course, they all spread out, and it becomes much less of a problem. We've had this discussion every year with the police department. I think we've done a great job of meeting their requirements. We're not trying to constrict any parking. Junkins Avenue is, uh, as far as I know, has no parking on it anyway, anywhere along the street that I'm aware of. So uh, that, it's just at that corner, I think, is what she meant to say. From the corner of Junkins Ave into about the courthouse, is where the problem area is because that's where we a race starts. So is that I hope that answers your question. Well, it seemed as though she was asking for no parking on Parrot Avenue. Period. No, the other end of Parrot Avenue we, is not a problem. You're, City you're, manager, could you, you? What I will do is I'll make a note because yeah. if you do refer to me with power, I will meet with Doug and we will mark the the areas that would be for no parking. Thank we do it every year. This is a, this is a this is the fourteenth time. So, yeah. have you always been able to have no parking there in other years? Yeah, I think what the only thing since I've been on board is we found out where the specific area, uh, last year we weren't even at the specific area. It's at the start, right? With, just when they start, it's so congested at the Junkins Avenue end that it's really dangerous. After they, they run out, it becomes easy because they, they go around the corner onto Richards Ave. We all know that's narrow, but it's just where they start that's the problem. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Council Penalakis. Um, further discussion on this item, which has been severed from the consent agenda. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Now we have the remaining item on the consent agenda. So the motion would be to adopt the consent agenda, which seems odd given that we have one item, but for what it's worth. Acceptance of donation from the Portsmouth Police Ranking Officers Association in support of the Portsmouth Explorer Cadets in the amount of $100 uh, it would be moved uh, to accept and, and uh, the donation to the Portsmouth Police Department is. Move to accept the consent agenda. Move, move seconded to accept the consent agenda. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Next item, 11A, letter from Doug Bates, President of the Greater Portsmouth Chamber of Commerce, regarding the Market Square informational kiosk. Do we have a motion to accept the place on file? Your Honor. Do you um, care to speak to that? Yes, uh, I would. Um, the, there is a request to propose to install lockable and closed poster swing cases on each of the six, eight lower exterior panels. Uh, each lockable case would be offered as advertising spot at a cost for a specific local venue. Uh, also, they're looking to put a digital frame inside the window so people can see opportunities for uh, some in dis destinations in the city. I would recommend that the City Council refer this to me for report back. What I'd like to do is have the opportunity to talk to planning staff and others because not that we don't want to support the Chamber of Commerce, and of course Doug is here, uh, it, it does something we need to look at very carefully to make sure we don't have any unintended consequences or set any precedents. So uh, if there are questions relative to why he has this request here, again, I would ask that you, you allow by consent his, uh, an opportunity from him to come forward. In the first instance, before we ask Doug to speak further if he wishes, do we have a motion to move to the city manager for a report back? So moved. We have a motion. We have a second. 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 Doug, do you care to address this? Yes, thank you very much, Doug Bates. I'm president of the chamber. Um, in your packet, you can see the the constant 
evolution of what we had to put up with is uh, is that the kiosk, um, which was put there in 1978, I believe, as part of the Market Square project, and it's become an icon of the of the Market Square area, is the, is the public posting place, uh, and people come up with a, with disregard to the building, and they they put tape and they put push pins and they get. There are ads on there, and I, some of you in the wintertime, it just this, this looks like the, the whole thing has got a paper siding on it. Um, that is expensive to deal with every year. We have to take all those out, fill all the holes, and repaint. And, uh, you know, as I, you can imagine, it's a, an ongoing expensive proposition. Um, we thought a couple of things. Uh, a, if we could control what was on the bottom and allow some of the, our venues like Music Hall or Art Speak or whoever to have a space to tell their story, which, which is clean, which means we have to do a little policing. Maybe the city can help us by post no bills. Um, <laughs> that would help us, and it would defray the cost, because uh, we're not looking, it's not money to put in our pocket. We're just trying to defray the cost of the constant maintenance of something that's nearing, uh, let's see, 30, 32 years old. So that's one. And then the, just an idea, because inside our chamber lobby, we're, we're putting a 24-7 computer, the same idea maybe at the, down at the kiosk is to have some information that, that flashes. Um, it's very tasteful. I sure some of you seen picture frames. You can slide through different things that uh, go on in Portsmouth. And uh, we thought that during, obviously, just the tourism season, because we're only there from, you know, 10 to 3 right now, and in the summer we're there from 10 to 5 or 10 to 7. That might help um, our customers, our visitors, find the proper venue. So that's, that was the genesis of the idea. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Council Speer. Um, I don't have any questions. I just had some comments before we get the report back. The, uh, with the digital display, I think um, when I'm trying to imagine it at nighttime, I think it, I wouldn't like it because the, the we do restrict those types of displays right now as signage, and, and but during the uh, and this will be part of the report back, I guess. But during the daytime, it's as you mentioned, the hours in the summertime, it's really less of an issue for me. I don't know how much it would stand out. Um, just a consideration. And then the second thing is, uh, this type of structure, a kind of a, I know there's a person in it usually, but uh, you have a round octagonal thing where right in the center of town, where people put. There's obviously a need for this type of uh, message board, if you will, a community message board. And so I understand your wish to clean it up, and I support that. But I'm hoping as part of that discussion, maybe the city, I've seen this in other cities, uh, especially in Europe, the city could have this type of, I don't know, I've seen in college towns too, just kind of a uh, octagonal post in that same area where people could be encouraged, stick your stuff on there with whatever you want to do, and then they could have that outlet for their needs. Councilor Dwyer. Um, comment, I'm glad to hear it's going to the planning board because I think we've worked long and hard as a planning board not to allow some of uh, the kinds of things that are being discussed. I appreciate um, what Doug is trying to do in terms of, of clean it up, but I think it sets a very bad precedent in terms of advertising signage for what our um, <laughs> pending sign regulations will be as well as the digital piece. and. I'm uncomfortable with doing anything about this until I understand better what the ongoing relationship is going to be to the Discovery Center, and I hope that will be a part of the report because it makes so much more sense to me now that the Discovery Center is set up with a full room of all kinds of great information, plenty of room for people to pick things up, human beings there, including Granite State Ambassadors, to get information from that we direct people to that area rather than to this already congested, um, bound to be uh, kind of chaotic area. So I would ask that that be a part of the report as well. Just so, so it, excuse me, so am okay, I hearing just you? Just a moment, just a moment. Excuse me, we'll let you speak in a sec. So that we're clear, um, the motion is going to be to, uh, to move to the city manager for a report back. Now, what I will do, Your Honor, is because I think it, as Council Dwyer has brought up, I, I will ask the, uh, the staff to bring it to the planning board for an advisory and review and bring it back, you know, as part of the report back. Doug, did you have something? Yeah, this is not our building. This, the chamber, 
works the building. We're not in competition with the Discover Center. The city of Portsmouth pays us $40,000 a year to bring tourists here. We're certainly not going to close the door and send everybody up the street where nobody really knows where that building is at the moment. We're trying to partner with them on, on cultural and, and historical issues, which is what they purport is their essence in the town. That chaos sees probably 40 or 50,000 people a year come to that kiosk for information. That's not the point. The point is that uh, on the, uh, and I understand that the, the digital frame, uh, that's out there a little bit on the edge, but the, it's a mess. It is an absolute mess. Maybe we can partner with the city to wrap it with something in the wintertime. We like to keep it clean in the summer. It's a very important tourism tool and a vital thing to this city for us to be able to operate and look professional in that building. Okay, um, there's going to be a lot of stops on the bus before okay. this gets back to us. Thank you. Uh, as, uh, Assistant Mayor. Yeah, well, I just want to um, agree with Doug. I mean, this is a, a very important little kiosk. I see it used uh, very, very often. I'm, I happen to spend a lot of time down there. Uh, we've also had a discussion in the past about how terrible it looks when the, um, the uh, bills and posters and uh, all kinds of things are stuck to it, and the, the, the breeze. It's just, and if you look at Market Square from a distance, it's a beautiful square. We've done a lot of work there, and this kind of sticks out as is not pleasant, and it gets overwhelmed. So you really don't even see what's on it. But it, it obviously shows that there's a need for that kind of thing, as uh, Councilor Spear pointed out, some sort of message board place where people can advertise their lost dogs or a concert coming up or something like that, where people do walk by and want to see that, that they're not going to go to a, another location to, to find out what's going on. Uh, so if we can couple those those in with it, and I think this is important that the, the planning department uh, looks at this as a comprehensive use. But the building itself is really a, quite a treasure and uh, needs to be kept looking uh, like like it belongs in the square. That's all. Food for thought. Thank you. Um, so, for the council, Novelin Clayburgh. I, I just have a question. How often is it staffed? Is it just staffed in the summer? With yes, it starts. We've already started we're 10 to 3 until the season kicks up. It starts on Memorial Day. So. And you've estimated that 40 to 50,000. We get 25,000 inside our building through the second set of doors every year, and we keep very careful statistics, as the city manager will tell you. The Economic Development Commission is very concerned about how many people we see every year and where they come from. So all that's, that's a data collection device. You can read, I'll advertise a little history of the thing in the in dividends, which I just wrote, um, our staff wrote with me. So it's an interesting investment that you have made in the city that's almost 42 years old. So. Thanks. Any Thank further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thanks, Doug. Um, we now move on to the city manager's portion of the agenda and his lengthy list. Maybe a record of what requires action this evening. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, as you are aware, there are five separate collective bargaining agreements on under my name. Uh, the each one has to be voted on separately. Uh, it would be my recommendation to start with the uh, Supervisory Management Alliance, and what it would basically the uh, the motion would be to. Uh, to adopt the Supervisory Management Alliance tentative agreement, a uh, term to expire June 30, 2014. And I would ask that for the other four as well, that that type of uh, motion be made uh, for the adoption and ratification of these collective bargaining agreements. Okay, so let's take them one at a time. In the first instance, can we get a motion as regards the Supervisory Management Alliance? So moved. We have a motion, we have a second. Discussion. Your Honor, Manager, do you care to present a little further? Certainly. Uh, as was described, uh, uh, as you've, you've heard prior, uh, there are certain tenets within this agreement, in these agreements that follow through. Uh, first and foremost, the, uh, uh, the uh, salary, of the foregoing of a salary fiscal year uh, 10, uh, that would be July 1, 2009 through June 30, 2010. Uh, the increase in the premium share for the health insurance, and each of the contracts have various other items that uh, they have within them. In the specific instance of the Supervisory Management Alliance, there is a concession that was given relative to overtime, uh, and which was very significant. And so uh, that was uh, one of the uh, items which it, within this, uh, this contract would be different from the others, but primarily the uh, concessions made uh, relative to the collective bargaining agreements 
uh, and the uh, primary ones are the, uh, the, the uh, foregoing of the salary increase for fiscal year uh, 2010 and the increase in premium share, uh, the, the, uh, the in increase in salary over the uh, course of the remainder of the contracts uh, would be uh, in accordance with a 10-year rolling average of the CPI Boston base. Thank you for that offering. Councilors with discussion. Council Nobel and Clayburg. I guess I just want to thank everyone that was involved in the negotiations, you know, with our tough economic times that we're having today. It's um, wonderful that people are willing to make concessions so that um, our budget can um, be more balanced for our taxpayers. And I just want to thank everyone that was involved in this negotiation because it um, certainly helps the city and our, our residents and our taxpayers. Thank you, Councilor Noblin Clayburg. Um, seeing no one else requesting to speak, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. And thank, thank you. Thank you, Ron. The next one is the Portsmouth Association of Clericals in Education. A similar type of uh, uh, agreement with the primary tenants that I outlined. If and I failed to mention that if there are any questions that the city negotiator, Tom Flagar, is here to answer those or uh, Diana Fogarty, our human resource director. A motion would be in order to so adopt moved. the. Second. Okay, okay. We have a motion duly seconded to adopt the Association of Clericals in Education's tentative agreement to expire June 30, 2014. Discussion. Council Noble. I, I just want to echo what I said, and I guess I'll just say it this one time. And, um, I won't say it for the other contracts, but again, people worked hard, people worked together, people cooperated, um, and we're thankful that that, um, that happened so that we could have this contract that, um, and the other contracts that um, are helping everyone in the city. Thank you. For the Council Spear. Uh, I echo what she said, and I also want to add one of the things I've learned is my, uh, coming on my second year on the Council is how little control we really have up here. And oh, I've learned this over these negotiations as we started out with, with some goals and then the national economy changes and then the uh, things in Concord change and, um, at, and both from the legislature and from the budget. And um, it's often frustrating, but I'm very, um, with all of these contracts, I'm very pleased with these contracts, and I think it's going to put the school department in a very good place over the next few years with their budgets. So I uh, strongly support these contracts. Um, Assistant Mayor Blaylock. Yeah, I just want to acknowledge uh, that these contract negotiations were very difficult, as was pointed out during the public comment session. And I'm, I'm one of the counselors during um, some of our discussions that it does hope we remember uh, the concessions made so that when the round comes again in 2014 that uh, we can recall um, how cooperative these unions were. Council Kennedy. Um, I think we can all echo everyone up here for all the hard work everyone did in all these contracts. But the one thing I think the public needs to realize that the fact that these men and women decide not to take COLA this year is a long-term benefit for us. I mean, I think a lot of people are saying what's going to happen next year and the year after. Um, because we don't not, we can't build, we don't, we will not be building on that, it will save us thousands of dollars from here on out just by not having a COLA for one year. So I think not only do we thank you for this year, but I think the public should thank you for the next five years. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, it is unanimous. We move on to the Custodial, Supervisor. Custodial Supervisors Union. So moved. Well, we have a motion to adopt the Custodial Supervisors Tentative Agreement, motion made by Council Pentalakis, Second. seconded. City Manager. Again, uh, the similar provisions. Uh, this one does have uh, a, um, a provision relative to overtime, which is very important, as does the SMA contract. This is, uh, again, one of the major goals of the City Council, and it was achieved through this. Uh, uh, and the custodial supervisors were a leader in this area, and they should be commended for that. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 The next item, Your Honor, is the Portsmouth Peer Professional Association. Again, the same tenets within the agreement hold true. So moved. Second. Discussion? Hearing none. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous in our final contract. The final one is the Association of Portsmouth School Administrators. Again, uh, this, this one has a uh, similar type of uh, COLA adjustments as was described, <coughs> premium share, but it does have other items within it uh, that deal with uh, uh, education uh, requirements uh, that are held out separately than the other agreements. So moved. Do we have second. a second? Second. Discussion. Hearing none, I'm going to pass the gavel to the Assistant Mayor. Mayor Farini. I'd just like to take this opportunity as well to echo the uh, comments of my fellow counselors and say that these five contracts represent significant leadership and community spirit, and it is not something that we take for granted in any way. And we appreciate that it's difficult, and certainly the comments we heard tonight indicate that it was. But when you have people who work for our city that care enough about our city to do this, it makes our city a better place, and it makes our job better as city councilors. Most importantly, the taxpayers out there who hear this need to understand that it's not always doom and gloom. People do step up, and I think everyone did in these five contracts, and I certainly appreciate it. No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. <clears throat> Ron, I just want to mention that there was, uh, there's probably about $164,000 in savings. Uh, uh, that will be received during fiscal year 10. In addition to the savings that were from the PMA and non-union, uh, this brings a total to about $300,000 for fiscal year 10, which will be reflected as we go into the final parts of the budget. Thank you very much. Now we move to item two, or yes, item two, those were bullets. Okay, Your Honor. Uh, the next item deals with the shoreline exemption for POCO deck relocation. I've asked Peter Britz, our environmental planner, to give a brief overview as uh, the uh, request uh, from uh, the applicants. Uh, this is pretty similar to uh, a uh, shoreline exemption uh, that we uh, basically went forward with uh, about a year ago as it relates to uh, uh, 88 Bow Street, I believe it is. But proceed, Peter, and give us a little background on this. Yeah, this, that's Peter right. This, this is just like the uh, exemption down the way on Bow Street. This, this project, however, will have an additional benefit to the city where we're going to be improving the park um, area. They're going to be relocating the Poco's deck closer to the building. However, that is still within 50 feet of the of the water. And in order to in order to build that, they would they would not be able to do that under the new Shoreline Protection Act rules, even though they're moving further from the edge of the water. So we're um, favoring the request and and um, asking that we can forward a request to the state exempting that area within the 50 foot um, primary building line of the state. It's for two lots, map 106, lot 48, and map 106, lot 49, because the configuration of the lots is such that they're um, two properties where the deck will cross the two property lines. The thank, you, thank you, Peter. Uh, before we get to any questions, if people have them, let's get a motion on the floor so we can have discussion. So uh, we, moved. We Second. have a motion. Seconded. Do it. This, the motion is going to be to make a formal request to the New England DES seeking, I'm, I'm sorry, NEDES, New Hampshire. Uh, seeking an, an exemption from the Comprehensive Shoreland Protection Act for MAP 106, Lot 48, and MAP 106, Lot 49, and to take any further action that may be necessary to secure an exemption for this property. Do we have a motion? We have a motion. Councilor Dwyer makes the motion. No, somebody nope. already did that. Somebody, did, somebody did that. I'm sorry. And there's been a second. And there's been a second. second. Ignore me. So, but only for this question. Um, Councilor Dwyer. Um, just a question. I thought we as a city already did this for that we already applied for exemptions for that whole part of town no. am i wrong on that? city manager no we only did by by parcel we just only do it by parcel right okay and that's how it has to be done going forward doesn't have to be but that would be what we would recommend okay councillor penelarkis then councillor kennedy yes um mr bridge do you see foresee any problems with this with the new rules and regulations and laws that went into effect? No, this, this is a consistent um, way that the state has actually asked, asked that we go forward in situations like this because of the historic nature of the shoreline in that area. Okay, thank you. Council Kennedy. Um, I just have a question about, is there a certain amount that we can do this on, a certain amount of our, store, our shorefront property, or is this something that like we could do on a lot of pieces of property? I'm just curious. 
There's certain criteria it has to meet. The state has four criteria. Yeah, um, I saw the criteria, but I, mean, I didn't know if there's a percentage of land. There's no, oh, it, within the ones that meet the criteria, all the ones that meet the criteria can go forward. There's okay, no, that's there's all no I was limit. Asking. Yeah. Given some of the right. stuff that's coming up, I was just asking. Right. Further questions for Peter or discussion? Council Novel and Claver. Are we pretty sure the state will approve this? I mean, there shouldn't be any problem with it. This, it, it, it looks like it meets all the requirements of the state. I don't see any problem with it. Right. Seeing no one else with an urge to speak, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you, Your Honor. The next item deals with the exchange of property interest between the city and Portsmouth Navigation Corporation. I've asked that the deputy city manager come forward and speak to this issue. Uh, it is pretty much the, uh, the issue, as you may all know, as the um, dumpster issue. And uh, it is one that I know that many people worked hard and long to find a solution. <clears throat> and we think we have a real, we have a good one. Deputy City Manager Cindy Hayden. Good evening. Um, as you know, we're trying to improve the waterfront down there and uh, create public access. Since Hence, we are moving the Poco Diablo deck over. The second component is the compactor. There's also license to several businesses in that area. And this, all this does is shift the compactor back on what is now Portsmouth Navigation property. Um, and in exchange, it's almost an even land swap. Portsmouth Navigation's fence sits on a little slice of our land that runs perpendicular between Ceres and the uh, waterfront there. They get 183 square feet of our land. We would give up, uh, we would get 173 square feet of Portsmouth Navigation land push the compactor back onto that property a little bit and just open up the public access area. And this is a recommendation of the planning board. It has already gone to the planning board for a lot line relocation. And one of the stipulations of the planning board was to recommend uh, to the council this conveyance of land, this land swap. Thank you very much. Can we get a motion on the floor and begin discussion? The motion would be to accept the recommendation of the planning board and authorize the city manager to execute the required documents for the conveyance of the property between the city and Portsmouth Navigation Corporation. So moved. Council Smith has moved it. Council Kennedy has seconded discussion. Council Smith. Just point of clarification. So the dumpster, it will still be the same style of dumpster, just moved back over. And will there be expanded area for further recycling uh, that will be in that area? The, um, the, the compactor enclosure is going to be redesigned and rebuilt to look much better than it does now. But the, the compactor will essentially, on the inside, still be the same compactor. We, um, there's not room inside to have the recyclable bins, so those are still going to, the totes will still live in the alley. We are going to be able to accommodate some um, grease storage inside the compactor <clears throat> area and also some cardboard, but that's as much as can be right. accommodated. In and, and I might want to just add, Council, we are looking at the whole downtown. We, we want to, I've been talking to the Public Works Director, and we're trying to figure out a way to better deal with recyclables downtown. Okay. So we've been talking about that. We're not yet ready to come forward with a proposal, but we have been talking about it. So there, there could be a proposal later on to help deal with those issues? Well, we need to have one. Yeah, we need to. Agreed. That's yeah. why yeah. I keep picking at it. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. Thank you. <clears throat> so further questions or discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Item four. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a... Uh, just a, uh, an item that's coming back to the City Council for ratification from the trustees of the trust regarding uh, the, uh, their proposal regarding seasonal rent, rental rates. Uh, they basically found that the uh, rental rates that they originally approved uh, were not, uh, were not uh, popular, uh, that there were, were not a lot of takers, and they would, wanted to adjust those, and they have proposed an adjustment, as you've seen. Uh, uh, the trustees determined to reduce the price for seasonal slip at Prescott Park Docks for 2009 to $100 per, uh, per foot. For non-residents, the fee would be reduced from $170 to $120. And the City Council, just for your information, did approve 10 slips for seasonal rates. And the trustees have approved the policy, but as per the City Attorney, he has suggested that this be ratified by the City Council. With that, so moved. we have a motion to uh, adopt the Prescott Park Dock seasonal rates as approved by motion uh, as approved by the trustees of the trust fund and recommended by the city attorney. Council Smith has made the motion. Do we have second. a second? second? We have a second. Um, with that discussion, Council Kennedy. Um, just to clarify, I make sure because there was a little bit of interest on this. Um, it's a one-year. Non-renewable right. situation, so it only can happen one year in a person's 
life or? Well, no, what would have to happen is that every year there would be, if there were 10 slips made available, uh, if you had a slip for one year and there were 20 people that wanted the slip, you would actually go into a lottery with everybody else. Every year. Powerful if there, if there were only nine people <clears throat> interested, you'd get that slip again. Council Noveline Kleber. I just, just for a, a comment that I heard was that um, it, it's a great idea, but there's really no parking for your car. Um, so that was just a criticism I heard. I think it's a great idea, but that was a comment that where do you park your car when right. you go out on your boat for That's why six the, or eight hours? You right. know. So okay. this is a pilot program that the trustees wanted to try, and I think it's, it's a commendable to try to, uh, to provide some revenues to keep those docks uh, repaired. There you have it, market forces and democracy in action. Does anyone else care to speak? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, that is unanimous. Aye. Item five, <clears throat> I'm going to have to abstain from the discussion and voting and pass the gavel to the assistant mayor. I want to get to item five. Okay, item five uh, is a request to re-enter into a revised license agreement um, on 68 State Street. Your Honor, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the city attorney speak to this issue. It is just a very a pro forma type of uh, license extension, uh, and it, they have uh, uh, removed many of the uh, barricades that they had in place. This would just deal with uh, a uh, encumbrance on on Court Street. Bob, you, you recall that uh, <clears throat> this was, earlier license was granted, allowing some use of Court Street and some use of other streets uh, to build this project. The project was intended to be completed by now. However, it is not. Um, the developer does not need <clears throat> an extension of any of the portions of the license except that those that are shown in blue on the diagram in your packet on Court Street. Um, the recommendation is that you uh, <clears throat> extend the license to December 30th and give the city manager the power, if necessary, to extend it beyond that. The project. Okay, well, the appropriate motion to put this into discussion would be uh, to recommend the city council move to authorize the city manager to negotiate and enter into a revised license agreement for purposes of facilitating construction activities at 68 State Street. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Your Honor, also just to note that the barricades have been removed already. Uh, that area has been cleaned up on State Street. Uh, so it would be, the effect would be uh, Court Street. Uh, Council Novel and Clayburg. Can I just ask a question? Um, is the reason for the delay, is it the economic situation that we're in, that they can't get the funding and the... No. I'm, I'm not aware of the reason. I, I believe it's more of a construction issue. Any other comments or discussion? Councilor Kennedy? Clarification. So I really appreciate them moving the barriers. I think um, there's been numerous comments about that, and I really appreciate the fact that they moved the barriers and made it so that people can get into the other shops. But what does it really mean to Court Street? Is it, is it just going to be? It means that the area that's shown in blue on the diagram right. in there would not be available for public parking until probably the end of this year possibly into early next year. And that has been that way, I think, previously as well. Any further discussion? Yeah, I, I Councilor Kennedy? Um, I just, we need to, you know, really watch our parking. And I, and I have a hard time when people are taking parking without a definite end time. Um, we're seeing up on Bow Street. We're seeing other places. So, I just I just want to say that. Any uh, any more discussion? You're moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Don't mind, Thank, Thank you. The, the uh, next item we already took care of. Memorandum of understanding with our speak. Item seven. Item seven. We're dealing with a proposed policy regarding a public gathering in Market Square. This is. For purposes of just having it before you tonight, uh, I'm not asking for a vote tonight. Uh, I would ask that if you have any comments or concerns that you contact the city attorney or myself. Uh, this is our first uh, shot at uh, trying to develop some kind of uh, policy that would be in keeping with the people's ability to gather in the square and protect their rights to gather in the square, but also to, uh, to have a policy that would uh, also require 
uh, you know, the, the ability for people to continue to traverse the sidewalks without being obstructed and, and safely do so. Uh, this is, a, like I said, a first blush at it. Uh, uh, we'd be more than happy to take your comments on it, and um, we'd like to bring it back for June 22nd for final action. Let me just offer, uh, thank you, City Manager, uh, just, just so that you understand procedurally, when we vote a policy, it's a one-time vote. So uh, take the uh, City Manager's uh, request for comments to heart. And um, I'm sure that'll be an interesting discussion. The, the other thing about a policy that the city council adopts, it can change it. Uh, you know, it can come forward again and change it. It's just so that from the staff perspective, uh, we have something that we have as a guideline. Uh, these the policies that the city council have uh, put into place this year have been very helpful for the staff. It gives us that opportunity. You'll see on the agenda later on uh, when I speak about three other. Uh, items in terms of licenses for encroachments over the sidewalk. We've skipped the, a, a, the, uh, uh, the initial process that we had and we're able to expedite those. So um, again, this is just to get us started. I'm uh, more than happy to answer any questions or to uh, take any input on, on, on the proposal. Understanding the ground rules then, uh, the motion would be to move to authorize the city manager to bring back the aforementioned policy to the June 22nd city council meeting for action. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Okay. Noting that we have time in the intervening time to make comment and discussion, Council Noble and Claybrook. I just would it be helpful to have a timeline that a group has to request like two weeks ahead of the scheduled <coughs> event? Would that help you, John? If you had a I'll let the city turn. Unlike the two ordinance amendments uh, made by the council earlier tonight, simple things um, where they could be done on the fly, if you will. This particular policy has to balance the constitutional rights, the First Amendment rights of people to express themselves on the public sidewalks against the right of the city or the obligation of the city to maintain safe passage on those sidewalks and to protect the interests of other property owners and businesses nearby from being adversely affected by this expressive conduct. This is not something that we're going to be able to amend on the fly. So I would really request that any councilors who are interested in proposing amendments to this policy uh, uh, contact me uh, no later than the Wednesday before the council night meeting. I'll do that. Councilor, Councilor Dwyer. Well, can Would you have a follow-up, Nancy? Oh. I'm sorry. No, no, I just said I'll do that. Okay. I'll put my request in writing. Can I ask about enforcement of a policy? The enforcement, well, it is similar to the enforcement that would be given with power. And uh, certainly we would enforce the, the policy itself in addition to what ordinances are conveyed within that or, uh, or referred to within that policy. The policy is drafted with existing ordinances in mind, but they, they would serve as instructions to the city staff as to when and how to enforce those ordinances and resolve ambiguities. Um, a, pol a pure policy as such is not enforceable. You couldn't uh, issue a summons to somebody for violating a council policy. But uh, a, a city inspector, let's say adjacent page, um, going through the sidewalks downtown, uh, would be able to tell by looking at this policy what the council intended its ordinances to mean. Um, and that's the way it'll be used. In addition, it's something that can be handed to everybody when they ask what are the rules. Give them the policy. Those will be the rules. Um, Councilor Dwyer. Would there be an intention, if should we have such a policy, would there be an intention to enforce such policy consistently? Of course. It's always our intent to try to be consistent. <laughs> but, I, well, I, I'm just. But sometimes there are things. This allows, what this does is it tells people that if there's something other than them coming to, this, to, the, to the square and standing with signs and allowing people to traverse through, that they need to come to the city council and ask for permission to set up and encumber the sidewalk. Right. That is already in the ordinances, right, right, right. but the problem you have is this is for a staff, so down in billing department or in my office, somebody comes in, such as the previous event, we would hand them the policy and say, and we highlight that you need to come to the city council, here's a policy, because what happened was we had a couple of events that took place, and they said, well, we didn't see any policy. Well, we have a, an ordinance book this yeah, thing. Right. And so for, somebody, so for the expectation for somebody to come in to City Hall and look up that ordinance is, is probably not going to happen. So from our perspective, it, it makes life a lot easier for us to say, here is the 
policy of the City Council relative to gathering in Market Square. If you are just going to be out there uh, pro protesting or informational picketing or whatever and allowing any, people to go through, fine, go do it. If you want to set up a, uh, a, 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 a podium for speaking and have a program, you really need to come to the City Council to get a waiver of that encumbrance on the city sidewalks. That's basically what this does. Council Smith. But just to f f continue on that thought, if, they, if somebody shows up in a group and they're allowing people to come through and they show up with a bullhorn, well, that's, then, they're allowed to do that because that's the First Amendment. I would, well, that's actually one of the issues addressed in the policy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take the privilege of the chair and, and wade into this and say, this is Constitutional Law 101. It will be a complex discussion when we vote the policy. Those kinds of questions and those gradations are absolutely what this is all about. And it'll be one of the fun times for us as city councilors, I have no doubt. Uh, so I, I, I ask people to prepare for that one and certainly offer your comments and questions to the city manager. Well, yeah, and I, but I, I would say that this, I think Councilor Dwyer is correct in that the, this really just pushed people back to the appropriate ordinances. And they are right there for people to look at. And it does, though, allow the city council to waive the ordinance to allow an encumbrance on that sidewalk if it so chooses. But it does not prohibit people's right to gather there and to express themselves, period. Council Penalakis. Yeah. And what we're doing is just balancing Public safety with people's rights. Exactly. Exactly, exactly what it is. Yep. There it is. Perfectly said. Further to, and succinctly. Um, Call us and give us all input right. that you need. So, we, you know, do we need a motion for that? Uh, no, you're fine. I, okay, Thank then we'll move forward. Um, item 8, John. Okay. Let's get, let me get to it. Uh, the next uh, item. We're not even halfway through John's agenda. Uh, <laughs> The next item deals with the proposed repairs to the South Meeting House. And as you are aware, in September of 2008, uh, the South Meeting House on Marcy Street became vacant as a result of the Children's Museum move from the location. Uh, subsequent to the building becoming vacant, a committee of representatives from the South uh, Friends of the South End was uh, formed to discuss with myself and city staff the restoration and reuse of the building. Members of the committee included Attorney David Anderson, Guy Marshall, and Joe Almeida. The committee met on three occasions with city staff to discuss improvements that would be needed to uh, the building uh, for complete uh, renovation and restoration. The committee and city staff recommended that the following work be completed. Uh, that the replacement of the roof, the clock tower needs structural work for long-term viability. The building needs to be completely painted and some clapboards require replacement. The building currently has no insulation, needs insulation installed. The area around the building needs uh, new pavement. The area around the building needs to be landscaped. Uh, I asked the city staff to work with the committee to form a, uh, formulate an estimate for these repairs. Uh, the preliminary estimate is approximately $200,000 for the first five items. The representatives from the Friends of the South End have indicated uh, that they have raised $15,000 that could be utilized for the landscaping. However, it is imperative that before next winter, the aforementioned work be completed in order to ensure that the structural integrity of this historically significant building, which was built in 1866, continues. Once the exterior repairs have been made, I would recommend that we seek a tenant that would do fit up on the inside of the building, improvements to heating system, wall repairs, painting, et cetera. Uh, and I believe that the, this needs to be done this year. We tried to do as much work last year as we could just to make sure we preserved the building the best we could. Um, and I would recommend that we utilize uh, Urban Development Action Grant funds, which I believe is an, so, an appropriate source for uh, these improvements. Uh, and that we would work very closely with the committee uh, to have these put into place. The city staff is in the process of gathering estimates now uh, that would we'd be able to put out the package uh, to bid by late summer and then have the work done uh, by, the, uh, by the winter of this year. And again, it's imperative that it be done because uh, we did determine that uh, unless we do these extensive repairs that we could have major costs into the future. And I want to just take this opportunity to thank the members of the Friends of the South End that have put the time and effort into this. I they're sitting in the audience. Uh, and um, they've been a great assistance to us. So I'd recommend that the City Council authorize me to spend up to $200,000 from UDAG for the repairs that I've listed. So moved. Second. Second. Motion duly seconded. Discussion. Council Dwyer first, then Council Smith. 
Um, I think this is a great idea. I'm in favor of it. I just a little footnote since we're on policies. Um, one of the policies uh, that we as a council or principles that we adopted in the building reuse is that we that a uh, neighborhood group would have like the right of first refusal. And so well obvious for the use of a building, well obviously given the cooperation that's assumed, it just might be helpful to actually have that on record because as we go for tenant use because that was something that uh, came out of that we we did talk to the to the to the friends in their committee I don't believe there is a burning desire for them to have it available to the friends of the south end but we well, can have that conversation again. I just think it's I, I you know I hear that from the discussion but I just think in light of kind of moving forward on our own policies sure. it would be a good idea sure okay all right Council Smith. Thank you. Uh, I just want to uh, thank the friends of the South End for their work on this, and also I think that the two hundred thousand dollars coming from UDAG is the absolute perfect use for those for those funds, and glad to see it's being used that way. So, do we have a motion to? We the motion's on, right? Yeah. Is it, it's already on. My apologies, Council Kennedy. I also think it's um, imperative to point out that the friends of the South End um, are willing to put up money and also willing to put up. Um, efforts and labor, especially for the landscaping. We have a lot of um, horticulturists in that in that area. Um, I also think that it's realistic to say that in the future coming out, the friends in, um, in a brief discussion, maybe more me than them at this time, but um, feel that we need to look for the right tenant and that we understand it might not be a nonprofit. That might be someone that, um, but we want someone that can keep the building up and take good care of it and make sure that we have parking for the residents around there as part of the agreement. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. The next item, the next few items I think are pretty pro forma, but I'll, I'll go over them mercifully. Uh, item number nine is request for approval of PSNH poll license 630475 and 630476. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, and there are uh, uh, picture locations for the City Council to review. We need a motion to adopt that. Councilor Smith. Second. Okay. Beautiful. Discussion. <laughs> Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 A similar type of license agreement is uh, requested by uh, for approval from uh, TCG New Jersey and ATT. Uh, the City Public Works Department has reviewed the underground conduit system location, location provided by uh, TCG <coughs> New Jersey, a subsidiary of AT&T for a petition and conduit license for underground utility crossing at the end of Echo Avenue. This is similar to pole license, only on the ground. So moved. Second. Moved. Okay. Seconded discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Your Honor. The next three items deal uh, are pretty much uh, in accordance with your policy 2009-4, request for a license from uh, Jody Curtis of Re-Inhibit LLC for property located at 15 Daniel Street to install a projecting sign. Uh, the, again, this would be uh, a recommendation from the Planning Board uh, for approval. So moved. We motion. Second. We have a second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number tw 12 is a similar request uh, in accordance with uh, policy 2009-4, request for a license uh, from um, Michael Labrie of River House Restaurant Group LLC for property located at 53 Bow Street to install a projecting sign. So moved. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the, the next item, again, is in accordance with policy 2009-4, request for a license from uh, Joe Hickey of Blue Athletic Inc. for property located at 67 Bow Street to install a projecting sign. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, Your Honor. The next item deals with a proposal for a half-day work session regarding review of proposed zoning ordinance. Um, as you're probably aware, uh, the Planning Board has been working long and hard uh, on these uh, amendments to the zoning ordinance. There's been over 45 planning board work sessions and meetings and several dozen meetings with other land use boards as well as city committees and commissions and extensive input from city key staff. Uh, it would be my recommendation if it's possible to have a half a day uh, review uh, of these items so that the city council is fully aware. It's a very intensive uh, review. Uh, so that when it goes to the public, that when your constituents ask you questions or when you have to question during public hearing, 
that you would be fully advised of what, what the, uh, the intricacies of the uh, proposals are. And we are recommending uh, that this happen on Friday, June 26, from 12.30 to 4.30. Um, and it would be at the, uh, the library if, if we could arrange it. Do we need a motion to establish a work session? Yes, we do, Your we Honor. We do. So, so, so uh, anyone care to make the so motion? So moved. Second. Discussion. Councilor Kennedy. Um, Councilor Smith. I will not be able to attend that day. We're wrapping up the year for school. So uh, if we can do another day, I'd appreciate it. But What I will do is if, if we can get a, a majority of council members, what I'll do is I'll set up a secondary alternative time for you to get the review. Uh, we, we're trying to get the council up to speed on this before it gets, because the zoning, uh, the planning board is out there, they, they're ready to go, they're moving forward on this. I think it's important for the city council to have a full uh, briefing on these ordinances. If you, I, I'll make a note that you can't make it, but we'll make another time for you. I'm, I'm the same way. Okay, I'll just then we'll have to find another three time. weddings that weekend. Okay, well, if you want to do it Thursday, I'm fine, but. I can do it during time. the week too. I can well, let me on. let me check with the mayor and see what he has. Will you allow me to just come forward with a date and poll everybody? How's that? That's and if he sets up an alternative time, again, it's not something we're voting on. So if others feel that that's more convenient, the mayor can establish it yeah. by by his right uh, we'll as do. The mayor. So I love that. I will so. uh, I will confer with the mayor on a couple dates, and we will telephone poll you. How's that? Yeah. That'd be great. Is better right. for me. Okay. So we have nice a motion. Okay, we have a, a motion to establish half-day work session on Friday, June 26, 2009, as well as at another appropriate time for councilors who need it. Does anyone well, care? No, no, this is, oh, we're oh, going to actually look for, whole, we're gonna look for a whole new date. We're just okay. going to look for a So we're just going to say we're going to All right, let's try. So just establish a half-day work session with a date to be Here. determined. Date by to be determined. By the mayor. All right. Bring with that. Now, that's the motion. Does anyone care to make a motion so that we have it right? So move. So move. Second. Second. Anyone? Second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 15. Okay. Of Thank you, Your Honor. This, this next item is uh, um, an item that came in late uh, la last week. Uh, was a proposal from Highliner Foods requested the city apply to the New Hampshire Department of uh, Resource and Economic Development for approval of Borthwick Avenue area as an economic revitalization zone. This request in anticipation of expansion of Highliner Foods involving new capital equipment and new job creation. Uh, they've chosen to stay in Portsmouth. We're very pleased about that. Uh, they had been, I believe, we're looking around, and uh, we're very happy that uh, they're going to stay here. Uh, this ER zone is uh, designated by the City Council uh, in order for us to apply to uh, uh, DREAD for their approval for this area. Uh, there is no local dollars associated with this, but this gives us another tool in the toolbox to keep them uh, within the city, there is a full description attached of the um, economic revitalization zone uh, program. And I ask that uh, you allow me to uh, submit an application to the New Hampshire Department of Resource and Economic Development for the approval of the Borthwick Air Avenue area as an economic re revitalization zone or commonly referred to as an ERZ. So do we have a motion for the city manager to submit? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Third. Council Dwyer. Um, I, I'm in favor for this, but I do think because it does, the criteria for eligibility do relate to uh, land use, um, underutilized or under, unused or underutilized industrial parks, vacant land structures used for industrial, commercial, retail, designated. You know, I know it's an economic, sort of an economic overlay, but there are land use aspects to it. I'm not suggesting that it be approved by the planning board, but maybe sent to the planning board from an information perspective sure. because sure. of the um, the land on Borthwick is is something that whole area has um, been under a lot of discussion by the planning board, and people have different feelings about medical office use in that area, and all number of discussions. So, just for information purposes, I think it would be a good idea to do that. I will do so. Okay, if you'll accept that informally, he's made notation, no. Council Dwyer. And then just this is just an informational question. Uh, these the zone tax credits isn't that something that the governor did take out of the budget for this coming year? I'm not well. I'm not totally sure how that's going to all end up. Uh, there really is no um, decisions in Concord at this point. They just went into a committee of conference between the Senate and the House, and 
the last I saw, there wasn't much left of the governor's budget. So it is now between the House and the Senate. Well, I think the and Senate took it out too, right? Yeah, they might have, yes. Yeah. But there, we need to yeah. end up with a House vote on it before we Th can. This was a request of Highliner Foods and Dread that we come forward with yeah. this. And I just think it's something that we can do, and, and, uh, and it uh, shows our willingness to work very closely with them. So we have a motion to city manager to submit the application. I think if the motion's already been offered and seconded, has it not? Yes, sir. It has. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And that's all I have, Your Honor. Amazing. Congratulations for having weathered it. That was cool. uh, now we have um, my portion of the agenda, and I will be brief, but we have a few items. Uh, we have appointments for consideration, not voting. Elena Maltese, reappointment to the Historic District Commission. Jeffrey Mountjoy, reappointment to the Portsmouth Housing Endowment Fund. Arlene Corvo, appointment to Pierce Island Committee. Harold Hapgood, appointment to Pierce Island Committee. Heather Hurt, appointment to the Recreation Board. Carl Diemer, reappointment to the Recreation Board. Kathy Burst Siegel, reappointment to the Recreation Board. And one for voting, uh, Marianne Blanchard, appointment as a regular member to the Conservation Commission. You'll recall she was an alternate. So, uh, so moved. We have motion. Second. Second discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Um, with regard to the City Council 2009-01 uh, Commission quarterly reports, I think the timing for them would be such that we'd want to start to schedule these in the fall. They have a little bit of ramp-up time, um, and sometimes meeting times for some of those committees might not be uh, so good in the summer, but the idea would be that we'd start to bring those forward at that time with the, with the acquiescence of the Council. Um, Item four, status update on the Portsmouth Middle School, speaking less generally to Laura's point about state budgets, um, stay tuned. Uh, just so that we have a sense procedurally of where we might be, um, in the event the state goes forward, they vote their budget the 24th, or are supposed to. We vote our budget the 23rd. 22nd. I'm sorry, 22nd, my apologies. And they vote their budget, I understand, the 24th. Um, at that time, we're going to know what we need to know uh, to further inform the public and ourselves about whether or not and to what extent there might be a vote as regards the middle school. We also will learn uh, whether or not the monies uh, paid by the state for the bond service for the debt of the high school uh, would be coming to us. There are budgets in flux, and, and again, as Council Penalakis indicates, it's too soon to tell, but I ask you all to stay tuned, and we will be monitoring the situation very closely. Councilor Spear. Uh, the last time, when we had the first bond reading, uh, a few counselors had questions. And about Which the bond? Middle school, about the uh, middle school bond. municipal bond. Municipal bond. Middle school, middle school. The middle school bond, the first bond reading with the middle school bond. And we had some questions. And uh, I don't know that we need, at least we're, we're going to wait and for the second bond reading until the budget is, I agree with that. But we don't have to wait to get our questions answered or at least some sort of well, th this is what I'll say as, 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 as traffic cop and agenda cop, I'll certainly listen to suggestions. Here's my point. If they're not going to put the money in, should we take the council time? Good point. Council's All busy. Right. And, right. and so I think in the event, the, obviously the minute we know, we're going to move into gear. And um, if we don't, then we don't. Council Penalakis. The money that is in the budget at this time is just the monies that will come back to pay for the schools that have already been built. Noted. And whether there'll be any more or not, I don't know. But that, even that money is in jeopardy right now. Thank you, Council Penalakis. And with that, I have nothing further. And um, we have Council Smith with two items on his uh, under his name. Thank you. I'd like to ask for a uh, acceptance of the action sheet for traffic and safety for May 14th. So moved. Second. Discussion. And let's, uh, you I'll care to speak to that, Council Smith? Yeah, I'd be happy to go through any particular ones. So there's nothing in here that requires an ordinance change, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions for Council Smith? Council Dwyer. Council Dwyer. Uh, just explain the, on number two, amended motion, continuation of the three bands across Congress, Steve. They came, um, <coughs> pardon me, the, Music Hall came to uh, Traffic and Safety. They are creating um, bands in, in the roadway pattern. pattern that comes down, and it's going to come all the way down across Congress Street. Uh, Traffic and Safety is looking more uh, further on that because we were afraid it was going to cause confusion as people are driving along Congress Street seeing those bands okay. there. 
So, so we, we've asked, so that was tabled and uh, coming back to, to our next meeting, which will be this Thursday, uh, to discuss that. City manager would like to further address it. Over and above what you would ap approve within the action sheet and the traffic and safety, ultimately this uh, entire item would come back to the city council for full discussion. Yes. Anyone else with questions, comments, or discussion for this item? Uh, Council Noveling Claybrook. Um, Council Smith, the uh, number nine, the um, traffic light at New Franklin School, is that being paid for by funds from the, that we got from the um, no. school uh, safe routes? No. What we have asked for is letters to go to the Department of Transportation so that in requesting that a traffic light be put in. We, as a city, do not control that section of the road that falls on the Department of oh, Transportation with the state. So we cannot say we want a traffic light there. It has to meet certain warrants. At this time, it has not, and the state has not put them in. Um, but we keep requesting that they do that, um, and, and that's, that's pretty much where it sits at this time. This, this go around, we ask Safe Roots of School to also send a letter, mm -hmm. as well as the principal of the school, the superintendent, and, oh, and the school board to also send letters up asking the state to please put this traffic light in. So they pay for it then, if they, if have, they, if they agree to correct, it. Correct, but it. unfortunately it's it's not something we have control over. We can only make the requests. Thank you. I'd like to pass the gavel to the assistant mayor and ask him if he could uh, recognize me to inquire of Council Smith. Mayor Farini. Um, Ken, if, if, um, if we send all those letters and the state says no, do we know or maybe Bob knows if there's an administrative procedure or something by which we can continue to press the issue. Don't know. We don't know. <clears throat> so I would presume that if they find some reason to say that it's not appropriate, I wonder what our additional legal recourse might be. Uh, the best, the next thing for us to do is then speak to our delegation, uh, letters to the governor, and start. You know, basically, you're going over the de uh, Department of Transportation's head to really try to get this done. Well, we know how to Every, do that. We all, we all realize that how important this is, but again, it doesn't, it, we don't have the final say. And, it and, has to be. And also, there are certain warrants right. that have, have to, to and, be and So if they don't legally comply with the warrants, they may have no choice. So just say no. But well, let's see what happens. Right. It's, it's one of those things, too. I mean, we, we get requests all the time for stop signs to be put on streets. And you can't use a stop sign to control speed. Go figure that one. But we can't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate your listening to that. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. I'm opposed. Councilor uh, Kennedy votes opposed. Eight to one. Item two, Council Smith. Uh, thank you. I'd like to ask for acceptance of our parking committee meeting for uh, May 14th. So okay. It's a motion. We have a second. Um, and be happy to go over anything. Wait a minute. We didn't get a second. second. Jack, second. okay. Second. All right. Second. Council Noveling Clayburg. The one I just want to point out because it will require a proposed ordinance change, and that is uh, at the high, high Hanover parking facility, uh, require an ordinance change there for um, immobilization of vehicles that have stayed longer than uh, 30, 30 days. What is, and I'll be happy to explain that. Well, we've what, got a motion duly seconded. Would you yeah. get a? What okay. happens in that instance is there are some people that will go in, park their car in there for a long period of time, and then go in, push the button, take a ticket, and drive out like they've only been there for a couple of hours. And if they move fast enough, they have been able to get out of there for free because, of course, we allow the first half hour free or first 15 minutes free. So. This is one, a request that has come down from our parking manager to be able to tighten up the ordinance to be able to stop that practice of which some people have been have been doing. I think we've just told them how to do it again until it's passed. <laughs> Does anyone else care to um, anyone else care to speak to this? Thanks, Councilor Smith. Uh, Councilor uh, Panalakis. Yes, yeah, so we're um, moving the enforcement down from nine eight. 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. No, that, that further on, uh, we're anticipating a report back. It was a subject that we started to speak of. Uh, it's now gone back uh, to the finance to find out what the cost would be. Cost would be, and we'll, we're anticipating a report back. Uh, the report, I think, is due back in July. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Councilor Smith. Any further yeah. questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. One opposed? Uh, Councilor Kennedy. 
Miscellaneous and unfinished business. Seeing no one rise to offer any. Just one item, Your Honor, city just management. remind the City Council that on June 22nd, we will be working on the adoption of the budget. So I'd ask you just to remind you to bring your budgets with you for that evening. Uh, we will have a series of resolutions available for you for that evening. And um, basically, hopefully, we'll adopt the budget uh, on June 22nd. But just be aware that it has to be adopted by June 30th. Hearing that, Council Penalakis. Yes, you should be aware, too, that there is talk up at the state level of a continuing resolution to keep the departments going through the summer if the budget cannot be completed by June 30th. Noted with horror. Any other <laughs> yeah. comments or questions? We'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you and good night.